Mary Testa, and I'm going to answer these three questions that Josh gave me. I can tell you that training is like, let me put it in a metaphor. If you were about to paint a picture and you had just black and white paint, the painting would be specific and it would have to be just kind of the same two colors. But when you have training, it's like you have every color in the palette and your painting becomes richer and more in depth and more intense. And I think that's the same way with training. Training gives you the tools to be able to hit various parts of you uh, to create a character that's rich and, and, and surprising and whether you're just an actor, just a straight play actor or a musical actor or even dancing. I mean, obviously dancers know that without training, you know, forget it. So I think training is a very important thing and it's different for everybody. Some people like um, intense training, school training, you know, being in school for a long time. Some people, like myself, like trial by fire, which is by doing it. I'm pretty focused when I'm on stage. It's very hard to break my attention. I'm usually a very focused, sort of laser beam focused in a way. Um, but I remember when I was in college, um, this was the beginning of me starting out as an actor. I wasn't professional yet, but I was still in training. And um, there was a moment where I had a line and for some reason, the line struck me and I said it in a way that I had never said it before. I think I even yelled it in a specific way out of frustration, what I was experiencing with the character. And I remember thinking, wow, okay. For a split second, I was looking at myself, which is wrong. You should be focused. And, but I remember thinking, wow, I, I can go anywhere I want to go. I can do anything I want to do with this character. And it struck me as like, wow, really freeing. So I would say that that's it. I don't know if that answered the question, but that's what, that's what, um, that's what it is for me. Train, study voice, make sure that you are uh, using your voice in a way that's not going to hurt yourself. When you're younger, you can do a whole bunch of things that can compromise you the older you get if you start pushing through, belting really high, all of that stuff. So train your voice. I would suggest to train operatically um, because then your voice will be in good shape for whatever you're gonna do, whatever kind of stuff you're gonna sing. And the other thing is that I would say that you have to love it more than anything in the world. Because if the, you have any doubts about being in the theater or being a musical theater performer or any kind of performer, then I would follow anything that interests you because this is a very difficult thing to do, to be in this career. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of rejection, there's a lot of disappointment. And so if you love this more than anything and can't live without it, then by all means, pursue it to, to the ends. But if there are other things that interest you as well, then I would pursue everything that interests you because you never know where life is going to lead you and you never know where your bliss is going to be. Like you might like, you know, I really love being in the theater, but I like sales too. You know, you might be the next genius salesperson and you just haven't given yourself time to pursue it. So I would say pursue every avenue that interests you and within a career as well. Like if you like dancing, singing and acting, if you like straight plays and musicals, pursue it all. Pursue every single bit and do it to the best of your ability. Sometimes, you know, we're not that good. And that's okay because if we come out with the, the intention to do the best that we can possibly do it in any given moment, that will be the best you can do. So I wish everybody the best of luck. I'm sure I'll see you all at auditions. And thank you, Josh, for asking me to do this and have a wonderful holidays. And please be safe and wear a mask. Thank you.